Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Let's start out with the Bitcoin chart at OKCoin in China. And uh, what I wanted to point out about this chart is that this uh, is not behaving like a traditional blow off top parabolic. Uh, you just don't get, I mean it can happen, but normally you just don't get this type of a, a bounce back when you when you have a, a parabolic blow off. Now we don't have the same sort of formation in Bitfinex. Uh, Bitfinex isn't as strong, uh, so it could be. But I mean, normally they look just like this one here, where they have this, you know, parabolic rise, crash, and then they just try to recover and they fail and they just kind of drift lower and then finally things sort out. Uh, you could see that it, it broke into new highs and then failed massively before it finally got you know, on that rally. But where we're currently at, uh, we're standing at about 2331 per Bitcoin on Bitfinex. Um, and by the way, where I sell my coins is on Coinbase, which has a significant premium right now, well, 2438 at Coinbase. And Coinbase's chart does not look it's starting to look more like a correction rather than a than a blow off parabolic top so we should know fairly soon if it's going to be kind of a head and shoulders thing and we go back down or we race into new highs again and who knows where those highs could be people have said 5000 it looks like the dollar equivalent price here o over on ok coin is 2535 and that's getting close. I think the high we put in on Bitfinex was 26.90. So it may be setting up for another run. Really amazing. Now I mentioned the other night about Ethereum, and uh, it's uh, it's getting kind of crazy now. You can see that Ethereum's 21 billion dollars. It's actually closing in on Bitcoin's market cap. That is not something I would have anticipated. And it just goes to show you, there are people talking today about how they bought Ethereum uh, when it was under a dollar and they didn't think it was gonna do anything. You can see it's uh, it's $227. So those people could have had a 227 fold gain. But uh, total market cap is 90 and a half billion dollars. That's the highest I remember seeing. I think maybe we were around 92. I, I can't remember exactly, but we're definitely getting uh, close to that high market uh, top number that we got for market cap for all the cryptos put together. Uh, some of the smaller ones are having some amazing runs, stratus, waves. Um, so it's looking like we're going to reach that $100 billion market cap. Now I want to spend the rest of the time on silver uh, unfortunately the silver chart on net Danny is not working for me so I uh, I just didn't bring up a chart but we're hovering around that 17 I checked it on Finviz and it's just a sick $17 and it's just going sideways to nowhere so we finally got the report from the Silver Institute on the year of 2016 so the numbers are finally in on their supply and demand they came in uh, they come in just at the end of May so you can see the numbers they're a little bit blurry because the image is is weak but you can see the numbers here nothing really stand out nothing really shocking but I want to kind of dig into the scrap number but just to review the numbers so We've got our mine production coming in at 885 million ounces for last year. Now, that's not a high, but it's right behind the previous year, which was 890 million. Now, again, this is a question you have to ask yourself. If we had record high prices for silver in 2011, and uh, we had them back in 2010, why don't the numbers reflect that? They don't. The, the numbers reflect that the mine production just continues to increase and it's definitely not a response to the price of silver because when the price of silver has gone from fifty dollars to seventeen the mine production has gone from 758 to 885 now that's kind of suspicious now we already know that the vast majority of silver now is mined as a byproduct of other metals but are these even profitable operations 
you know why run a business that's making a loss and uh, we'll come again and look at the zinc copper and and uh, uh, base metals production and stock uh, in another update but the first line again we're a little bit suspicious about that now net government sales being nothing that's expected uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they lied and started putting a number in there uh, the one we're going to concentrate on is scrap you can see scrap is uh, 139.7 139 million ounces now that number has fallen from a high of 260 million ounces so we did have a response in the scrap coming to those high prices with 2011 being the biggest year of scrap sales and we're roughly half of that so the scrap number is dropping that's the lowest number we've had in this series at 139.7 net hedging who knows what that is that's their fake silver so you can't really tell one thing or another but the number was negative um, it's one of the six years seven years here that did have a negative while well, we had a positive last year so that brings total supply to 1 billion uh, ounces uh, 1 billion 007 and that's a little bit lower than last year uh, so let's look at the demand side of the equation you can see that we've got a decrease in the jewelry demand not significant maybe a 10 percent decrease but uh, the three previous years were higher uh, and that that demand is falling coins and bars was the big drop from where we were in 2015 you can see it came in at 206 we know we had a huge demand and shortage for silver eagles and things like that and then it just absolutely fell off a cliff um, it's slowly recovering this year but you can see that reflected in these numbers a big drop from 290 million ounces of investment in coins and bars uh, 2015 and then last year dropped down to 206 uh, silverware also dropped not a big drop but pretty low number coming in there and industrial fabrication is at the lower end of things uh, but the, these numbers are pretty steady it's lower than all of these years back to 2010 but it's higher than just this one year in 2009 so even industrial fabrication the number is dropping on the demand side and then of course it's broken down into uh, the various categories and that brings us to the physical demand comes in at, at uh, 1027 and that gives us a, a supply deficit of negative 20 uh, and then we have this ETP build and exchange inventory build. This supposedly is them stockpiling silver. Where's the silver coming from? I don't think anybody knows. It gives us a net balance of negative 147 million ounces. That's the biggest number we've turned in except for 2013 when we turned in a, a negative 149 million ounces. So... Uh, they're using more silver than they are mining and they are getting from scrap and where's the silver coming from no one knows but let's concentrate on this scrap number because the thing that makes me a little bit suspicious is where is the scrap coming from uh, at these low prices now admittedly the number is falling but my curiosity was piqued when I was thinking about you know uh, people talk about turning in old coins to the coin store well that can only go on for so long there just weren't that many there were a lot but there weren't that many and we went through the 1979 price spike we went through the 2011 price spike in silver both to fifty dollars and whereas we're sitting at seventeen dollars now makes me kinda wonder where is this scrap coming from so this is an article about scrap silver and it's called scrap silver prices in the u.s eight things you need to know and i'm just going to point out a few things here number one you need to know what weight is being used in the transaction and it just goes into the ounces stuff like that number two all dealers charge a premium for purchasing scrap silver when you buy or sell precious metals you have to pay a premium or a commission on the transaction this additional amount goes to the dealer who is handling the transaction on your behalf 
for small transactions a commission may be as high as 20 percent for bulk purchases of scrap silver it may drop as low as two percent depending on the final value of the transaction business to business sales may be lower than this number three silver comes in different quality levels and then it goes through that we all know about 999 and 90 percent coins etc spot price of silver is always changing yes we know that you can find number five you can find silver in a number of different places scrap silver prices are not reflective of where the silver actually originated the one exception to this would be silver coins that have a certain numismatic value in rarity that is above the actual value of the metal you can find scrap silver in dental fillings watches and even if it's wrong raw form in some parts of the United States. In order to sell precious metal scrap directly to those who process them, you must run a business that has a natural link to the buying and selling of scrap metals. Private individuals cannot sell precious metal scrap directly to those who process the metals. They must use a pawn shop, jeweler, jeweler or silver retailer in order to receive compensation for their silver. For this reason, a scrap yard may not be, the, may not be able to accept a skill, silver scrap either. Knowing where to look for silver scrap matters. Number six, if you have U.S. coins that were minted before 1960, then there's actually silver contained in the coin. You also find that many old awards, pins, and other items of memorabilia tend to have silver in them. As silver ages, it tends to tarnish. When you discover scrap metal that you believe is silver, then you will want to have a testing kit on hand, etc. Number seven, some items that are called silver are not actually silver. Don't be fooled into thinking that everything is called silver is silver. Your electronic waste probably has some silver in it. Number eight, precious metals are often used in electronic equipment today. This means that you've got a great chance to take out some silver from those components. Cell phones, televisions, computers, tablets, and laptops all have precious metal that can be mined. That's a stupid term. Although the overall amount of silver in these components is generally quite low, if you get enough e-waste together, you could turn in, it into a profitable venture. Despite all of these new electronics that are created every year, only about 15% of the waste that is generated by this industry is actually recycled. That means you could have the chance to collect an enormous amount of scrap silver and turn it into real cash right now. Scrap silver prices may be based on daily spot, but the cash you depends uh, you receive depends on more than that. Ask about the commission. Scrap silver is one of the most lucrative metals you can have that people just throw away, gather your precious metals today, etc. So this is a number I want to concentrate on here. Fifteen percent of the waste that is generated by this industry is actually recycled. Now let's just take that on its face value and get back to our our chart here. So the industrial fabrication number is 561 million for last year 10 percent of that's 56 million and five percent is uh what's that 28 uh, 56 and 28 so we're talking about 85 80 to 85 million ounces of this scrap number and, and that leaves us with roughly 60 million ounces of silver where is it coming from is it coming from jewelry? Uh, you can see that jewelry comes in at 200 million ounces. Do they make the jewelry? People then sell the jewelry to the pawn shops and it comes back in as scrap. Is it coming in, in coi as coins and bars? Uh, what about silverware? 52 million ounces. Do people actually scrap the silverware? Um, so these these numbers could be legit. Uh, if If that's correct now I would expect that with prices this low that we would see less and less scrap I don't know of anyone who has actually uh, had their cell phone recycled and I don't know of any operations to do so uh, to get the silver out uh, they say 15 percent but I have my doubts about that number so if that 15% number is correct, then this scrap number is probably not a phony number. But there are other numbers in here that you have to wonder about, especially net hedging and this uh, inventory build. Uh, the bottom line is that they mined about 890 million ounces of silver at current prices. 
that comes to be about maybe fifteen billion dollars roughly uh, check my math and so about fifteen billion dollars a year of, of silver coming out of the ground still a very very undervalued metal in my opinion uh, I can't say that there's any smoking gun in these numbers I can't point to anything in particular that I can prove is not a real number. Uh, it's interesting that they always seem to balance. They always manage to seem to balance them out. They throw in some negative number there to balance it out and say it's going somewhere. But the bottom line is that we're running a sil we're still running a silver deficit. We came in with the net balance, uh, a negative net balance of the second worst that we've ever seen at negative 147 million ounces but we know the price is not responding uh, eventually the price will respond we just don't know when the price of silver is actually going to respond to real supply and demand so back to the Bitcoin market again I have pointed out many times this is a market they can't manipulate now I was telling Jennifer the other day if I were going to try to fight Bitcoin and I was one of the powers that be probably the strategy that I would have is to create volatility in it by buying a tremendous amount of it or maybe even alts possibly and crashing them uh, that's kind of the thing that we've seen recently with ripple let's see if we can I don't think we have a ripple chart here um, no, we don't. But if we go over to uh, Poloniex, sorry, that was Poloni Box. So if we go over to Poloniex, we had a very big ripple rally going today. Let's see if we're still, looks like it may have petered out here. At one point, ripple was up 30%, I believe. and so as I was saying if I were going to try to destroy confidence in cryptocurrencies and I were one of the powers that be one of the things I might do is get some coin run it absolutely to the moon with the paper money that I have the ability to print infinite amounts of and then just absolutely crash it to nothing and wipe out an enormous number of people including new adopters and people that are just getting into the space that would be the best thing since there's no way to short these things as far as I know uh, but then again ripple ripple and some of these others I don't believe are real cryptocurrencies but a real cryptocurrency like Bitcoin there's no way to short it but you can create sort of a knock-on crash effect by destroying confidence and one of the ways you could do that is by buying up just every bit of it driving the price up thousands and thousands of percent and then just dumping it all and destroying the price and uh, devastating a lot of people that may be what they plan that might be what's behind ripple I just don't know so again scrap silver uh, the numbers for supply and demand seem a little bit suspicious but there's definitely no smoking gun there it's just more of the same um, the Bitcoin price again it is starting to look more and more like it's gonna try to make a new high and break that 2700 it's starting to look more like a correction than it is a crash from a parabolic top and we'll talk to you next time